figure is going to tell us about the structure of flows in a modern exchange economy. So we have a manufacturer and markets. We have manufacturer and markets, manufacturer markets. Then uh, these manufacturer markets are going to money to the resource markets. Then these resource markets are going to provide the resources that is, uh, for example, our uh, labor, uh, money uh, involved in it, markets, or we can say the machines, uh, technology, etc. These are being provided to the manufacturer. And in, in lieu of that, the manufacturer is going to give them the money. Then these manufacturer markets, they are also linked with the intermediary markets here. Uh, intermediary markets means uh, now these intermediate markets, uh, the manufacturer is going to provide them the goods and services and these intermediate markets, they are going to give them the money. And money also flow, flows from the government markets. Here the market is going to taxes and goods to the government and uh, the government is going to provide them services as well as money in lieu of those goods and taxes. Then government is also linked to the uh, resource markets they are also giving them the goods and services and then uh, and taxes and then the government is providing them the services and money and then uh, these government markets they are being linked with the consumer markets also and these consumer markets are going to provide them uh, provide the, the resource markets the resources for example the uh, labor required and in lieu of that they are going to give them the money and uh, these resource mar uh, consumer markets also give, going to give taxes to the government and in lieu of that the government is going to provide them the services required by the consumers and consumer markets they are also linked with the intermediate markets here they are also going to give them the money and then in lieu of that the goods and services are going to be provided to the consumers so these are the structure of flow how the goods and services and the money flows in the uh, modern exchange economy so there are five basic markets and their connecting flows that are being shown in this figure. So manufacturers go to the resource markets, they buy raw material markets, labor markets, money markets, etc. And they buy resources and turn them into goods and services and sell those finished products and services to the intermediaries who sell them to the consumers. So these are the marketing intermediaries. So these are the intermediaries which are going to sell the uh, they are going to buy from the manufacturer and then they are going to sell it to the consumers. The government collects tax revenues to buy goods and resources, uh, goods from the resource manufacturers and intermediate markets and uses these goods and services to provide public services like infrastructure, the, some of the trans, uh, like infrastructure in case roads, water transportation, bridges, etc. And they are also going to provide them the services required. Then each nation's economy and the global economy consists of interacting set of markets linked through exchange processes. So these basically the, these are the exchange processes and it is going to contribute to the nation's economy and exchange, exchange processes. So this is a simple marketing system. We have industry, a collection of sellers and then here is the market. So market consists of collection of buyers and here the collection of sellers are there. Here is the collection of buyers. So uh, in industry is going to provide them uh, communication, communication, goods and services, and, and the market is going to g uh, give them in, in lieu of that money and the information. So money, information, these are been the two things which are going to be provided by the market, that is the customers, the collection of. So this is a simple marketing system which, is, uh, which exists in the modern day markets. So then there are some of the consumer customer markets. There are, these are the key customer markets. We have the consumer markets, consumer markets, business markets, global markets, and non-profit and government markets. So brief uh, introduction about these customer markets. Consumer markets, companies selling mass consumer goods and services such as juices, cosmetics, athletics, shoes and air travel establish a strong brand image by developing by developing a superior product superior product or service ensuring its availability 
and backing it with engaging communications and reliable performance means they are going to back up with that uh, with the engaged communication engaged communication means uh, they are they are uh, providing uh, they are giving proper attention to whatever the communication are going to be sent by the customer to the marketer and they are uh, targeting the reliable performance then business markets uh, these are the companies selling business goods and services often face well informed professional buyers those prof buyers are very professional and they are well informed skilling at evaluating competitive ad offerings advertising and websites can play but the sales force here the sales force they are very important the sales force the price and the seller's reputation the seller's reputation they play a greater role so in the business a greater one in uh, so in the business uh, markets sales force becomes very important because they are the clients the customers they are well informed and they are professional buyers they knew everything about that product and it, they have the sales force has to be very very technically and professionally strong so that they can communicate about the product characteristics in a in, in a comprehensive form then uh, the global markets these are the companies in the global marketplace navigate cultural language legal and political in differences while deciding which countries to enter it means the markets which are there in the uh, another countries how to enter those uh, foreign countries each as uh, they can enter as exporter licensor joint venture partner contract manufacturing manufacturer or the solo manufacturer how to adapt product and service features to each country how to set prices and how to communicate in different cultures these are some of the important uh, challenges to the for the global markets so because there are the difference in the culture there are different in the legal requirements there are difference in the political environment there are difference in the uh, in their languages in the way of communication in the uh, and moreover there are very huge social differences that exist that has to be taken into consideration by the marketer while entering into the global markets then we have uh, non profit and government markets also they have the companies uh, selling to non profit organizations with limited purchasing parts such as churches universities charitable organizations and government agencies and they need to price it very carefully a much government purchasing requires so they, these type of non profit organizations have their own type of purchasing patterns that requires for example bids buyers often focus on the practical solutions and favor the lowest bid and other things they are equal so if there are other things equal the how to make a bid how to have a uh, how to tell them about the uh, the characteristics of the product that how the communication has to be done that is very important for a non profit government non profit and governmental markets because the uh, sometimes even the credit facilities has also to be provided to the non government non profit or the government markets